Walter, I'm so happy to be here with you today because I read your book, finished last night, and I'm deeply, deeply moved. It's a very profound book and it's beautifully written. And for me, it comes at a very important time in my life when after turning 70, I, things just drop out of my life. And there has been a lot of change. And in a, in a way, the book puts into words what I have been feeling for a long time. Mm -hmm. The title of the book says it all, Drop the Struggle. Mm -hmm. However, I was brought up to believe that without struggle, you don't get anywhere. How can you drop the struggle without dropping the effort? Well, uh, Isabel, first of all, thank you so much for that response. No, I really value that, and I'm really glad, most of all, actually, that in some way it's given voice to what you yourself have been feeling. So, thank you. Because um, that's what matters to me in doing a book, writing a book like this, uh, that people recognize their own life in some way. Uh, because these struggles, you know, are struggles that we all share in one form or another. Um, and struggle is part of life, obviously, because everybody struggles. We all know what that is. So, when I speak of dropping the struggle, uh, I certainly don't mean um, lying back and doing nothing, uh, or opting out, anything or anything of that kind. Um, struggle for me is different to effort in the sense that struggle is a, an extra push, usually or almost always born of anxiety, you know, that born of really the anxiety of surviving, essentially. But the struggle that we add to whatever it is we're doing creates a tension that paradoxically gets in the way of what we're wanting. And this is especially true, I think, of the things that really matter most to us. So, meaning in life, purpose, love. Um, for example, these are questions, or these are themes in our life that I feel struggle works against. Effort is, is inevitable, natural, and necessary for all of us. So effort would be to put, to put the strength to do things without anxiety. Exactly. So <clears throat> leaning back, in a way, uh, into another quality in us that is not actually dominated necessarily by the faulty process. So for example, um, you know, the author Rick Hansen, um, uh, speaks of, uh, in one of his books, speaks of uh, a time when he was 16 years old and he was a lifeguard in California and he was swimming in the ocean and found himself suddenly trapped in a kelp forest and he struggled and struggled to get out. He had no equipment with him um, and the more he struggled, the more he was getting embroiled and caught in this cup. And suddenly, out of nowhere, he dropped the whole attempt to fight his way out and began quite methodically to, one strand at a time, ease himself out of that situation. So that's when you talk about the the clarity that comes when you drop the struggle. Exactly. Something, he fell back. And that clarity it. is inside us. It's not something that you acquire. Exactly. Thank you. That's right. So that knowing or that clarity um, really is there all the time. So the whole notion of this book, Dropping the Struggle, is is falling back into allowing that clarity to emerge. I divorced very recently after 27 years of marriage. And of course the last seven years there was a struggle 
to keep the, the, the marriage alive and to keep love alive. And it didn't work. So now I am alone for the first time in my life. But I want love. And I would like to be able to, to confront that just with an open heart without the struggle to look for it. Um, and you, there's a whole chapter about dropping the struggle for love. Now tell me what you, what you wanted to say in that chapter. Yes. The first thing is I love what you've just said in that you've simply acknowledged the truth of your own experience right now, which is, I want love. Mm -hmm. Now, for, you know, often that's not so easy for people to acknowledge. You know? uh, oh, I don't need this, I've just divorced, I've been married for so many years, you know, I really don't need that again. And, no, I don't need another divorce. No, I, no you know, that, but you know, I'm better on my own, and so on and so forth. You know, which is, can be a kind of minimizing of one's true experience, which is, yes, I do. You know, I, I want love, I want to be open to another in this lifetime. So I think that is the, the, first, the first step, is <coughs> acknowledging where you are, really embracing that. That's part of what you were saying about being kind to oneself, you know. And I don't personally believe that we can then just go out and find love. <laughs> How do you do it? You, yeah, because I don't know that you do. Well, um, if you sit in this house and wait, writing all day, you need the ducks in the pond. That's it. Uh, and the dog. <laughs> so, so energetically, you make yourself available. In other words, you are available. That sort of availability is you carry with you. Now, you don't sit here all day with the ducks. You actually <laughs> meet a lot of people. And whoever you meet, man or woman, is just um, being, being of having that availability without pushing anything and trying to do something. And life responds. I really do believe that, that life responds. 